Hey you guys, thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to my channel. As you can see, this video is called Upside Downside. I know it sounds like a children's rhyme, but what can I say? That's the name I came up with. But to give a brief introduction about what this video is all about is this series, I plan to do more. At least I want to do more. So this series is inspired by Tim Talia. She usually does these uh, blogs where she said these blogs are called uh, rant and rave. And I think she picks chooses a brand or product. I'm not sure. Full confession. I've not read any of her rant and rave blogs at all or articles. I've just read the title and I'll just move on. I usually just see her swatch and review blogs that's it so i don't know what exactly she writes in the blog so i thought i'll just do what i i feel rant and rave would be so that's all this these videos are going to be about so for my first uh, upside downside video and i didn't want to use rant and rave i mean if the series or you know the kind of video is too popular i think it's better to use the same words in order to a new person who's coming to your channel to identify what kind of video this is all about but you know in this case I thought I'd go with my own name and obviously it's I don't know upside down so it seems very silly and childish but anyways that's all I could come up with and we are sticking with it so for this first upside down side video we are going with Fenty Beauty the reason I went with Fenty Beauty is because I just saw the promo pics for her holiday launch but I was very excited but always this is like a pattern with me i see fenty beauty promo pics i'm very excited and i want to see what's going on but just after you know when we first see promo pics there's rihanna's face all over it so i'm very excited and then when i see the actual products just focus on the products and the swatches and the prices i'm always like taking a step back so i thought let's deal with fenty beauty first so I have a few upsides. I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I have equal number of upsides or downsides. I've just made note of them. Um, and I thought I'd alternate between them because that way it'd be balanced. You know, like not going on appreciating Fenty Beauty and then talking ill of them. Not ill of them per se. Just my, my thoughts. Anyways, let's get into it, you guys. First thing is, First upside is Rihanna is, is like so involved and so enthusiastic about promoting her products and just applying the product itself on her face and not like in a like brushed, airbrushed picture. So, uh, I think a lot of th times, a lot of times she actually comes live and applies those products onto her face, which just makes it extremely relatable. I'm telling you, it makes a huge impact, at least on me as a as like an audience as like a just like a consumer it really uh, I, I mean I'm able to relate to Rihanna although she's like completely in a different uh, click world uh, I don't know just her applying that red lipstick when they launched the liquid lipstick and her doing her makeup for the Vogue magazine or video whatever I don't know it made it very very relatable and she applies all of her brand new launches and products on her face and she promotes it and i feel that creates an enormous impact on uh on consumers i think they're able to relate and the fact that the products are also it's, it's not too um drugstore pricing so someone very rich as her you know it's it creates a doubt in your mind you know someone who's as rich as her will she really use something that inexpensive you know if Rihanna had decided to go with like a um, drugstore kind of a brand but since it's like not it's it is high-end I would say I, I I would categorize Fenty Beauty as a high-end makeup brand so it is like believable that she would wear these products on a daily basis most of the time so yeah I think the first upside is that Rihanna is like extremely involved in the brand and yeah let's move on to the second one which is the downside Let's talk about Fenty Beauty's eyeshadow department. I got to tell you guys, they are not doing well in the eyeshadow department. It's in fact a flop, if you ask me. Oops, I don't know what happened. Maybe an air bubble, forget about that. So anyways, the Spice palette that came out this spring or summer, that was so bland. 
it did not have even one dark shade. If you take a look at all the popular spices, cinnamon, clove, bay leaves, uh, except for cardamom, I think all of the spices, their colors are very like dirty, brownish, very, very dark and kind of muddy colored. Mm, the browns and the mattes in the in that spice, Moroccan spice palette, I think it's called, they were all mid-tone kind of mattes. There were no like dark mattes at all. And there was this teal color and I feel yes I mean with a mix of neutrals throwing in like a color it actually it's a good idea but the time when they had released the Moroccan Spice palette there were a lot of palettes with that same color story neutrals with a pop of blue or teal whatever so I feel it just got lost it just completely got lost and let's talk about the formulation of Fenty Beauty's eyeshadows they are just not good you guys especially for the price they are charging I think 59 or 50, 60 yeah yes you get like 15 eyeshadows 15 or 18 eyeshadows I'm not entirely sure but still the formula is not good at all honestly they really need to do something about it the formula is just not good and um the holiday release last year it it was all right it was mediocre there were like hits and misses and it was just like a full-on glittery palette you know and people sometimes can accept a full metallic palette with metallic shades but with full glitter palettes it's a little hard for people for uh, makeup enthusiasts to accept that so i think for that reason a lot of people did not like the reason i did not like is purely the price it was quite expensive 60 dollars and there was some i if you ask me out of those 15 or 18 shades i think there were easily some four or five misses easily so yeah they really need to do something about their eyeshadows reformulated and color selection i feel they are not on par with the trend i don't know why i don't know why um i feel that way i don't know the eyeshadows where once we see just the pictures and swatches it just i lose it at least i lose interest but when we see first when it's first teased on social media it's always with rihanna's face and how it looks on her you know face and like her photo shoots it looks stunning obviously like i said the fact that rihanna's involved it's like amazing but still eyeshadows need to improve absolutely no question about it if they are planning to charge these prices look at the competition there are so many competition you guys so many they really need to do up their game now next is the upside i think the one of like the the biggest um unique selling proposition of fenty beauty is that they are a very inclusive brand that's how they identified themselves that is like a major upside you guys when when they came out with these uh, foundation shades like 40 shades and then they had lots of these sticks matte sticks with uh, blushes and contours and what else I think blushes and contours that the those sticks were just blush and contour sticks they had a variety of shades um, what what else do they have highlighters they also have a lot of colors they have they came out with few but it it had like a wide range from a very deep copper to a very light color so i feel they are an exclusive extremely ex inclusive brand i think uh that's a reason that it got incredibly appreciated across the board by everybody it kind of became like a standard you know 40 40 shades the number 40 itself kind of became like a standard that so many other brands say that oh we have 40 shades oh, we have 40 shades or somewhere close to 40 shades but still the color range color selection kind of seems off or kind of strange or sometimes there are like hits you know their color some uh, brands have like really good shade range when it comes to foundation and they have 40 shades as well but um some brands are just want to capture the audience interest by saying we have 40 shades because fenty beauty you know itself is like identified with like a 40 range 40 shades of foundations like have an incredibly good range but i don't know about the formula of the foundation because i don't use it i haven't 
see so since I don't use it, I don't really see reviews on foundation. So I, I can't comment on the formula of the foundation, but just the the fact that they're inclusive, they have blushes of all like from a fiery tangerine orange shade to like a very, I think they do have like a baby pink shade and like a lavender shade. They have some seriously beautiful shades. So they are, very, they are a very inclusive brand that's a serious upside, I'm telling you, especially at this time, age, at this time in like um, the beauty community, in makeup enthusiasts are seriously demanding for inclusive brands and I think um, Fenty Beauty seriously nailed it. Uh, so next is a downside. What I haven't, I have a like a page with stuff written and I can't even read my own handwriting I've just scribbled uh, what what is this oh yeah next <laughs> next downside is lipsticks okay they have three kind of lip products but I'm here to talk about just one of the lip products they have the traditional lipsticks uh, they're called stunner I think they're just called stunner lipsticks maybe and then they have their liquid lipsticks and they also have the glosses the glosses are super popular but I haven't tried them but um, yeah I should probably sometime but I haven't tried them and I think they have like a good um, value for money kind of uh, in a perspective they they give you a lot of product I think six or seven or eight milliliters I'm not sure and the price is like $18 or something like that so um now the liquid lipstick is you don't get a lot of product honestly but still there are a lot of brands that don't offer a lot offer a lot of product in the liquid lipstick like Stila offer like I think they charge you $24 or something for four milliliters just like um, Fenty Beauty's liquid lipsticks Fenty Beauty also charges you $24 for just uh, four milliliters or product so again it's not a lot of product but still there are some brands who do the same but the star of the show here is their traditional cream lipsticks I don't know if any brand sells lipsticks at such a high price I, I haven't seen any brand doing that and Fenty Beauty shouldn't either I don't yes their formula is actually it's a standout formula, I would say. Their traditional matte finish cream lipsticks, they, I would consider that a standout formula. One swipe, like great pigmentation. It's not too cakey. It sets beautifully. And yeah, it lasts well and everything. But still, they give you only one gram of product. And they charge you $18, I think $18 or $19. I'm not entirely sure. But still, that's outrageously that is a ripoff honestly you guys just for reference max lipsticks you get three grams of product urban decay's traditional cream lipsticks you get three grams of product in fact it's not even unusual for brands to uh, sell lipsticks which carry four grams of product nas uh, audacious lipstick carry four gram of products um bite beauties amuse bouche contains four, more, over four grams of products Pat McGrath's lipsticks also contain, carry more than four grams of product. Yes, these lipsticks are like expensive. Bite Beauty's 26, Audacious and Pat McGrath's lipsticks both cost over $30. In fact, Pat McGrath leans towards $40 with tax. So yes, they are expensive, but still Fenty Beauty is even way more expensive. Even if you calculate the cost, you get one gram of product instead of a full size three grams of product and you pay a one uh, a full size price you know like a MAC full size lipstick is was $17.50 right now and Fenty Beauty is what $18 that is quite expensive you guys that is if you ask me it's a ripoff it is seriously a ripoff you are better off buying a mini set when it comes to um, their lipsticks but still if you are seriously interested in any particular color obviously buy the full size but yeah they really need to do something about their product offering when it comes to the lipsticks. And uh, what else? Their packaging, in fact, is not that good. It's a very, 
your regular plastic packaging. In fact, it's not even as sturdy as a MAC lipstick packaging. MAC lipsticks, uh, plastic packaging is pretty sturdy, but the Fenty Beauty's lipsticks, product offering the, the price per gram is seriously not good at all. It's, yeah, that is a downside. I know I've been rambling about it for a while. Let's move on to the next one. Now, the next one, I don't know if a lot of people will agree with me, but this is my personal perspective on the product. And I'm, this is not even a category. We spoke about eyeshadows at a ca as a category. We spoke about lipstick, cream lipsticks as a category. But this is one particular shade in a category. So this is Trophy Wife from Fenty Beauty. This is their one of the shades in the Killer Watt uh, freestyle highlighters I think they're called from Fenty Beauty seriously this again started a trend you guys I'm telling you just like Fenty Beauty coming out with 40 shades of the the number 40 really kind of clung to people's minds it just stayed in people's minds so that 40 shades of foundation just like that this really created an impact in the industry I feel okay I'm I'm not going to use the word industry at least in my mind I see after Fenty Beauty's Trophy Wife there are so many brands coming out with glitter or pressed glitter highlighters and that's for good reason because I, I have it with me it's incredibly it's not that pigmented it's on the sheerer side but they've hit the perfect balance between the right side right size of glitter because they want it to be extremely reflective but it's not enormous you know the size of the glitter is not huge it's like perfect and it's almost translucent on your skin except when you like move your head and then the light hits the trophy wife highlighter and this is a trophy wife highlighter and that color wow this color really created an impact there are so many brands yeah, that is Fenty Beauty's Trophy Wife. This color, although a lot of people did not like this color because it doesn't suit a lot of skin tone. It does not suit a lot of skin tone. I'm so happy Fenty Beauty decided to make a color like this, although it doesn't suit a lot of skin tones. But still, this color kind of made an impact. So anytime, just don't take my word for it, but anytime you see a yellow toned highlighter, on social media if you go into the in a comment section someone would say oh how many companies would keep on making Fenty Beauty's Trophy Wife highlighter over and over again we already have the Trophy Wife if we need it we'd go buy it stop making Trophy Wife over and over again with a different formula I'm telling you I'm not joking I've seen comments like this several times that's why I chose to uh, include this as like a serious upside for the brand I'm telling you it created a trend the color itself created the trend of the formula of pressed glitter highlighters created a trend at least according to me it's it's good and for good reason you guys it's incredibly reflective they just struck that perfect balance it has some kind of a base as you can see even if I share it out do you see it has this mild base to it and the size of the glitter is visible uh, I mean in person if you see you would know I'm wearing a glitter highlighter but still it's a perfect size to the point that it's reflective but it's not huge so trophy wife is upside seriously just the fact that they made one product so incredibly well uh, I think that's that's a huge upside for the brand itself on the whole so next is finally that is a downside you guys I'm wrapping this up but so finally the I do not I uh, this is just according to me a lot of people might find this as a plus like an upside but I do not like the fact that Fenty Beauty always tries to market their highlighter as eyeshadows they come up with all these funky colors I think um, spring this year they launched this pastel like a blue in fact I think it's like this bluish bluish purple shade on my eyes on my eyes on my eyeshadow on my eyes something similar to that and like a pur pinkish purple and then recently they came out with as a part of a charity event or charity organization that Rihanna runs they came out with this gunmetal highlighter yes they the makeup artist i think her name is priscilla she tried to market it not try 
that that's her job she's a makeup artist for fenty beauty so she, that's her job to market it but the way she marketed it is that believe me it is sheer it works on a lot of skin tone but i could see when she was applying it i could see that the tiniest bit of dark cast on on the model and the way they market it is yes even if it doesn't work you can use it as eyeshadow no i'm not paying 30 and these highlighters are not inexpensive again these are 38 dollars i think 34 38 i'm not sure so who's spending 38 dollars on a highlighter which doubles as an eyeshadow you know i feel if they really need to come up with some duochrome or creative highlighter colors that can be used for the face and doubles as a like a highlight of the body instead of just marketing as um you know coming out of these funky colors and saying that oh if you, even if you do not use these as a highlighter you can use it on the eyes because some of these colors are like almost impossible to wear it on the skin i'm telling you that that gunmetal highlighter just did not look good you guys just did not look good i that i feel especially for a product that represented that uh, charity organization and I think 100% of the selling price went to this charity organization she was raising money for something so she should have come up with like a more uh, friendly like universally friendly shade I don't know I, I feel that she, I, I, I wasn't convinced and something that really was kind of off-putting almost is that the fact that she's coming up with a highlighter palette for holiday season it has all this again very deep bluish teal color like it's a really deep color and there's like a burgundy shade then there are three very frosty colors like which would 100 percent leave a white cast on dark skin it just looks white in the pan and then there are like i think two colors which are truly a highlighter shade like your regular traditional highlighter shade like a coral and like a coppery gold or like a bronzy gold color so this is like a highlighter palette which is being launched for holiday season and i'm sure it's probably going to be very expensive and who would buy a highlighter which has dark teal and burgundy like a rich burgundy color in a highlighter palette so they're obviously trying to market it as an eyeshadow palette as well i don't know i'm just not going to buy that you guys i'm uh, i guess it's like an anti haul right here i'm just not going to buy that i why couldn't they say that okay this is a product that can be used as a highlighter and an eyeshadow and they charge you eyeshadow prices you know what i mean but no they are charging us highlighter prices it's not like or you know what we could reach a middle ground here they could just come up with all these uh in like you know funky um trendy like out of this out of the box kind of colors like this teal and these uh frosty lavender and this burgundy shades and they say and they could sell it as highlighters but they could uh give us options you know you could you choose a smaller pan as an eyeshadow or you could choose a larger pan for a highlighter and so it's your choice you can either pay an eyeshadow price or a highlighter price it's not like never been done before i have seen some much smaller indie brands doing this i think looksy beauty does that they have some um eyeshadows or like uh, duochrome highlighters that where they give you an option to pay much lesser price for a smaller pan and then larger pan you pay like the full price for the highlighter and i think even um i don't recall which other brand does that but i'm fairly certain looksy beauty does that so i don't know i feel i just don't like the fact that they're doing it you know when becca cosmetics does it people are outraged they becca ex did the exact same thing you guys did the exact same thing last holiday season i feel except they're all like the traditional highlighters hi highlighter shades they had this um small circular compact which had these highlighters or like some eyeshadows they marketed as eyeshadows but they look like highlighters and people were why just you know this is so boring in fact i think maybe partly it could have been becca's mistake they should have marketed it as the palette as highlighters and eyeshadows and then it might have done better but yeah anyways 
that's my video hope i wasn't too boring hope i wasn't rambling and just going on and on about it i promise it will get better soon hopefully but anyways this is my video you guys of upside downside and about fenty beauty if do you guys agree with i what i say do you guys not agree let me know down in the comments down below i would love to discuss seriously yes absolutely i would like to know what you guys think about fenty beauty what you guys like and dislike um so yeah i'll see you guys very soon Bye bye